Coming up? No, there's no walls. There's no walls. Okay. It's, it's the Bowling Nerd Network, and we are now live. I just clicked the button. We're ready for match number three in just a minute. We're going to, on lanes 35 and 36, our featured lane. We have the Bowling Ball Mafia at 10 and 2 up against the Hatchet Man at 2 and 10, trying to right the ship. Bowling first for the Hatchet Man is Rich Lamone. He's in on the right side, knocks three. All over the head pin. Chris Merrill drops nine down to the four pin. Hello, welcome. Just join us, Bob Lee from Bowling Nerd Network and Spread Eagle Productions. I'm going to have uh, Paul Grant helping me out with the play by play today. Merrill will be open. Our Easter Classic winner, Chris, is. Takes a 10, picks up three pins early in the first box. Format for today's match is two strings worth two points apiece, plus the total pins. For a total of six, if, it, if the two teams tie, they will go split one and one. Rich Lone's first ball in the second is just right of the head pin. Both bowlers leaving splits. A two and one for Merrill, a three and one. For the hatchet men on the right, Rich Lamone. And we'll take down that graphic from our last match. Sorry about that. Oh, what a pickup on the, the head pin. Jumped out, looked like it was behind the 10 pin and came back. That's a 10, a 17 through two for, Lam for Lamone. 20 and a ball for Merrill. Our second bowlers for the Bowling Ball Mafia in gray, you see Mark Weber. Al Johnson is being called. He's not. He's not at the. Bo he's not in the booth right now. Not in the. Uh, not behind the lanes. Rich Lamone is looking for him. Al is the. Uh, the famous. Chris, Chris is gonna All right, Chris Winniars has been called into action. He's going to be, I guess that's a substitution. Well, he hasn't thrown a ball. He hasn't thrown a ball. We're going to say that's no substitution. And we're going to put Chris Winniars in. Chris's actual name's up on the screen. <laughs> and for you viewers at home, looking on the right where, that, where, where the uh, Hatchet Men score is, Chris, Chris is in the second spot. And here he comes. Took his balls out, and he's right on the head pin. No. <laughs> Doesn't miss a beat. He has a one and one, though. Weber comes in with that fastball. He's got a one, three, one. Wood to play with, though. That wood comes back right up against the three pin. Oh, Winniars was looking. Looking for the ball to take the corner. What a shot! What a shot for Weber. Used the wood and brought everything down and has a lead in the early going. Second mark for the bowling ball mafia. Go with their five pin lead. First ball in the second. Chris. Break out that room. Looks like the 4 5 with Wood that will play. 
Seven in the fill for Weber. An early 11 pin lead. There's Al. He's available for substitution though, we've, we've decided. It's Al on the left. Need that. All right, a 10 for Winniers and a nine for Weber. 26. Yeah, so so that's using our, that, our, our uh, camera on the corner is, is giving us a score. If people stand, sit on it or sit on it. Yeah, yeah. okay. All right, number three bowler, Aaron Fontaine, the winner of the Outrun the Bear recently, the scratch competition, won $2,500 down in Millis. Starts off the head pin with five, and Dave Purdy drops eight. He's got the 9-10. What a shot! What an improbable spare for Fontaine. Grandson of uh, famous Tommy Olson. First mark for the hatchet men. Fontaine now in the bonus. Just one. And eight drop. Two of very makeable looking four seven. Couple pieces of wood to play with. Oh dear, yeah. The second piece didn't cooperate. Eight pin lead plus the ball in the early going for the Mafia. Make it nine now. And here comes Steve Walsh. Great baseball player and softball player out of, uh, he's been bowling out of Central Park Lanes. Saw him recently in a, in a doubles money match at CPL. He's averaging 119 so far today through four strings. And eight, nine, ten! The four was the last to fall in. A matching attempt leaves the six pin. Doug, oh, Wood was not covering. That is Doug Smith. Settles for a nine off that beautiful nine drop. Working on a strike now, Steve Walsh on lane 36. First ball in the second box. A little full. Five down on the first one and talk about a little full. That was all the way full. Doug Smith as the spread eagle, no wood, and look at that! He, Walsh eradicated the left side triangle and got the wood to fly to the corner for a spare on strike. And just like that, we have a lead change. Smith takes a 10, he had 19, and that's, uh, 30 and a ball for Walsh after two. Here are our anchor bowlers, Dave Chesterco, 
for the Hatchet Men. Mark Carrier on lane 35 for the Mafia. Good. Well, pretty good mix. He's got the 1 3 10. Half Worcester right side. Carrier. What a shot for Chester Cove. And a little chop on the head pin. Just off what he needed. Carriers facing five and will take a six. Six pin lead in the early going. Plus a ball for the Hatchetman. Six on the fill, and the end, the five, six, nine, and ten, with Wood angled right at all of them. Chester Cove has a good look at it. Car Carrier now, his first ball in the second, straight through again. Can you believe it? How about that? A spread eagle with no wood and a spread eagle and a spread eagle with two talons. As Chester Cove goes just a little, little underneath. Get penalized sometimes, Bob, for on the six pin. Getting head pin. Carrier grabs three on the first one. He'll Chester Cove completes his 10. That was a 20, 26 for him. And an eight for Carrier. Tough, tough boxes there. Remember, if you're looking at, if you're watching at home, the, the scoreboard will show you the, the, the score of the match. The names change, the captains mix up the order every time. Each, each of these teams has eight, nine guys on it. Bowlers switch side. Chris Merrill drops seven off on the three pin. Lamone is in on the pocket. He gets, leaves a two and one. Both bowlers open. Sorry, not yet. In Lamone's case, the second ball is coming up. He's waiting for Jason Kaler on his left on lane 34. Look at that pick. It's gone! <laughs> and Lamone with his first strike. His first mark, sorry. In the early going, eight pin lead. Plus a ball. Merrill, who was in the bonus, had seven fill on his, in the second. And here he goes. There's the strike, so his second mark. You'll see the score, the electronic scoreboard turn red whenever there's a... Remind the bowlers to clear their wood. You did a great job on these lanes, didn't they? Little lanes, awesome job. Yeah, they were uh, apparently very slick. Uh, er everything you see in front of the of the uh, line is uh, is refinished. Plus the sidewalls too, right? Yep. A lot of good action. Five in the five in the in the uh, fill for Lamone. And he gets. There, that was a little, little bit of sidewall action there. He had the uh, bundle of five on the left. He hit it just right, but as so often happens, the uh, sleeper pin, the eight, was still standing. But his, uh, I believe that was his uh, head pin, his, his two pin in that case, bounced off the wall, came back, and cleared it for the spare. Mark Weber now, his first ball in the third. He had 
a spare in the first, 26 overall. Winniars off head pin, but it's a little action, a big triangle for him. He's got the one, eight, 10. Weber's open. Nice bid, but he's at nine. Through two. That was that was a ten. And a pair of tens from the second bowlers. The Hatchet Man versus the Bowling Ball Mafia. Early 13 pin lead for the Hatchet Man. Nine drop, 10 is falling. The last was the two. A strike for Weber. He's got two marks through the first four. Winniars is looking at the Kaleri, named after Bob Kaleri of Lexington. Who may, he liked, liked to talk about this one after he left it a lot. Different ways to make it. We find that those go at about a 20% rate. About twice as difficult as the four horsemen by themselves. And Winniars will take an eight. Shaves the lead down to 11. Our third bowler's coming up for their third frame here in the first of two strings. Dave Purdy sets up on lane 36. Aaron Fontaine on 35. Just right, leaves the four horses and the post. Fontaine is in the pocket, and he's got the check mark consisting of the eagle wing on the left side, the 247, plus the five pin, your king pin. Chop from Purdy. And just off. There it is, that's a 10. pair of tens in the third box from the third bowlers. First and the fourth here from Purdy. Pull on the head pin, he's a two and one. And that's a two eight, half Worcester. Fontaine. Lead is down to six at the moment. The bonus ball is coming. Fontaine will be open. And that's nine for Purdy. And a 10 for Fontaine. He's at 41 for four. Purdy's sitting at 38, both of them. Uh, well, I should say Fontaine had a, had a spare to start, but uh, had a fill of one. Fourth bowler, Steve Walsh working on a, on a spare. He had a strike spare at the beginning. Doug Smith, the tattoos. Those are all bonus ball, bonus pins. Missed the head pin, and that's the only one standing. All brought his fastball today. 
There it is, three marks in a row for Steve Walsh. He picks up three more there. Brings the lead to, for the moment to 14. Three bonus balls coming up for the Bowling Ball Mafia. One for the Hatchet Man. Oh, there's a strike. They, you might have seen a little bit of the wall action there, too. A beautiful, beautiful shot. And we saw him bouncing off the left side, came back to take out the 6 and 10. All right, those are all bonus pins, too. That's a, that's a 5 off a, off a wild pitch. Walsh is finally open in the fourth. His third ball coming up. He's looking at, uh, got a sleeper in the back. You might not be able to see on TV. He's got the one, two, seven, and eight. And just takes a nine. Good start. He's at 63 through four. Big part of that lead, which is now up to 28 pins, but three strikes from the bowling ball, Mafia, and just a spare coming on the fills from the first four bowlers. And here we have our anchor bowlers. They were both open. Mark Carrier, and the head pin drop six. There's a strike from Chester Cove. His second mark, he's, he's spared in the first. There's, uh, you make the check mark though. Both bowlers in the bonus. Chester Cove with a strike. Carrier with the spare. His first ball in the fourth coming up. Welcome if you just joined us. This is Bowling Nerd Network's presentation of match number three. Bowling Ball Mafia. Trailing in the early going here by 18 pins. Oh, double for Dave Chester Cove. That will leave a mark. And look at that. What a pair of spares, you know, on the, on the both unlikely spares. The check mark's going at 40%. That four in one, probably in the, you know, a, a one, out, one out of 10 of those will go. But that's why we, that's why we come to the invitation and see the best in the game. All right, so after four complete, the score is 238 to 205. Rich Lamone with eight on his fill, and I'm gonna hand the microphone over to Paul Grant. He's gonna bring you through the middle strings. Thanks, Bob. Great job as always. Ball Ball Mafia is 10 and 2 today so far on the first day of team matches. The Hatchetman at 2 and 10. Oh, got robbed on the pin there. Wood blocked it. Oh, he kicked it over! What a shot! Off the wall! Hit the seven pin, caromed off the wall, and a spare for Bowling Ball Mafia, Chris and Merrill. I, and, I, and I didn't mention as I handed it to you, that was in a strike. So that's a spare on strike. Wow. That's uh, 66 on that? 66, in a, 66 ball. in a ball at the half. Lamone! Wow, that's a ball that's great. A, that's a tasty looking spare opportunity. Chris Merrill. Yeah. Or a spare, not quite. Good try. And he gets another spare. Chris Merrill of Bowling Ball Mafia on fire. 84 on a ball after six. Awesome bowling. 
10 for Rich Lamone. 70 after six. Now we have Mark Weber from Ellsworth, Maine, coming up for Bowling Ball Mafia on the left. Chris Winningers from Manchester, New Hampshire on the right. Twenty-three pin lead so far for the Hatchetmen. For a spare, just missed the head pin. Six on the fill, the strike fill. 52 after four. For Mark Weber. Oh, what a shot there! Nice shot. Ten sixty-two now. After five to Mark Weber. The famous Hal Johnson. And he's filling. He's filling in for Chris Winias. Yep. Hal Johnson. So Winias put up a uh, forty-six half, and Johnson, who was originally announced as the starting second second bowler is in to substitute to start the sixth. Al, Al's <laughs> Channel 5 average has him it with a 78% object rate. First ball on the head one, pin. Splits it. One of the more precise bowlers I've, I've ever watched on television. He's from Hampton, New Hampshire. Mark Weber, see if we can pull this shot off here. Six, seven, ten. A nine for Johnson. Ten blocks for Mark Weber. I think they called that one in the channel. Oh, they, okay, oh, they got it no good then. Yep. They correct the score? They're going to correct yep. it now? It is. It, there's a button. They, they pushed the button and called that one a foul. I'm correcting Paul. That was that was uh, that was a ten. That was a ten. Okay. So 285 to 269 right now. 285 for the Hatchetman. 269 for Bowling Ball Mafia. Aaron Fontaine for the Hatchetman. Up third bowler. At a 41 half, Brian Purdy from Buxton, Maine, on the left. At a 38 half, 38 four rather. Oh, what a comeback for a spare! What a reversal there. Brian Purdy, spare ball. 58. I can't see a score from your boss. That's 58 All right, the score is uh, 295 to 279. But we got this uh, we have this bonus ball coming up from Brian Purdy on lane 35 to your left. Aaron Fontaine, that 10 gave him 51. He's off in the corner for just one. On the spare, gets five. That's the lead down to 11. 13 at the moment. 
50, yeah, 53 up to five for Brian and Purdy. Coming back for a spare, good try. Good comeback on the second shot. Montaigne for a 10, gets nine. 60 up to six for Aaron Fontaine. 10 for Brian Purdy, 63 up to six. Lead is down to 10 now, Paul. At the, mid, at the midway point. But uh, Fuller Mafia's on a bunch of marks, though. It's a three to one on the marks right now. They have three coming up, two. One, two. You're on three marks versus one, right? Uh, we're working on a strike right now. This is Doug Smith over on the other. Right. Walsh. Oh my God, he broke a pin. Wow, I haven't he seen broke, that before. Broke a pin. The cap of the pin shot up halfway down the wow. line. You see it on the right. I've never seen that before. Guy. Like that, wow. They'll, they'll, be, they'll probably clear it after this box. The new pins did not arrive in time for the tournament though, I guess. Sometimes you're throwing the ball a little harder than uh, League bowlers. Yeah. John Blaze, one of the substitutes for the hatchet man, comes down to pick up that and the cap is to bring it up to. <laughs> <laughs> that was phenomenal. Oh, almost it strikes. Got him one go. There it goes, maybe no. Wow. That is what the cap looks like. <laughs> Just pop it away. Right out. Wow. Pop the cap. It's a big out here for the hatchet man. Doug Smith for the spear gets it. Oh my goodness. Doug Smith on the spear. He's from Augusta, Maine. 56 in the ball. With the fill on the strike and that. It's the out. It's the out. Seven on the box. We have a lead change now. It's a, officially a three-pin lead for the Bowling Ball Mafia, but. Bonus, the bonuses are racking up. They've got uh, spares from the first, third, fourth, and fifth bowler coming up. Steve at 70. You're watching, you're watching the fourth bowler right now, Doug Smith in the bonus. Another. Seven. Not bad, Doug, not bad. Steve Walsh at 70 up to seven after that seven box. 70 up to five, rather. 70 up to five. Difficult shot. Oh, not quite. Good bid. Doug Smith can pull it over. Sixty-seven after five for Doug Smith so far. Nine for Steve Walsh. Seventy-nine after six, and a nine also for Doug Smith. He is at seventy-two after six. So 330 to 320, a 10 pin lead for Bowling Ball Mafia. All right, so Paul, both bowlers are in the bonus. Dave Chesterkova had that strike in the fourth. He's working on a strike on your left. Mark Carrier had it, picked up a spare. So I believe we had a double for Dave Chesterkova, though. It's off the screen right now. Yep. Oh, that's, so that one counts twice. Five in the first one. 25 in the third. Uh, 51 after that. And nine in the fill. Go get it, Mark. Go get it, kid. Mark Carey, the nine fill. 48 for him after four now. This is the fill in the second strike. Oh, what a sensational shot! Wow! Four plus the corner. That's his fifth mark. Five in a row, right? Well, five marks. Three in, three in a row in five his in the string. Yeah. He had a ten in the second. That's the That's only right. blemish. He's nothing left on the plate for Chester Cole. He's at 81 in the ball after six. Mark Carrier finished with a spare also. Had a spare rather. He's at 58 going with six rather. We're in the great. six box right now. He's a great mix. Seven in the spare for Chestico. And a nine drop. On the spare, 67 up to five. Remarkable bowling by both these guys right now. 
Chestikov, good chance for another spare. He gets oh it! Goodness. Wow! Four in a row for Chesterkov. Three in a row. Three in a row for Carrier. Well, I can't keep up with this. It's crazy. Chesterkov with 98 in the ball after six. Mark Carrier with that six spare. He got 77 in the ball after six. It's a six pin lead right now for Bowling Ball Mafia. What a, what, a, what a match we're having so it's far. A, it's six pin lead and a ball. Good, good call, Paul. Hey, back to the top of the order here. Tough lead. Rick Lamone. That was Chris Merrill leaving the end. He was in the bonus, though. Those six pins go on his total. Okay. Almost made it. He's at 90 after six. That Phil Lamona left from Winthrop Mass. Oh. Good try. Whoa, maybe. Not oh. quite. Chris Merrill from Lewis Lewiston, Maine on Alley 36. Got 99 after seven. Lead is officially 12 pins right now. The moment with a nine box, 79 after seven. Chris Merrill have a tough shot here to make. Lamone off the head pin, only gets four. Had the right idea, just hooked it a little, little bit to the right. See if Lamont can work something out here. Missed it totally in the hole. He's a big out here, gets six left. Nine for Chris Merrill. Seventy-nine after seven. Right, sorry, eighty-nine after seven. After eight. After eight. Eighty-nine after eight. And then at that nine, it's a one of weight score for Rich Lamone. So right now it's 380 and 392, so 12 pin lead for Bowling Ball Mafia. Mark Weber from Ellsworth, Maine up right now for Bowling Ball Mafia on the right. Solid head pin hit, leaves two. Has some wood to help him. Al Johnson. Al Johnson subbing in for Chris Winniers, the third box, fourth box. Needs the full horseman left. For the spare, missed it to the right. Al's got a guide. Let's see if he can use it. Can he pick it up? Not quite. Wood got in the way. Weber for a 10, gets it. 87 after seven for Mark Weber. Al Johnson with that 10. 65 for him in combination with Chris Winniers. A 12 pin lead still for Bowling Ball Mafia in the first of two strings here. From Lita Lanes, National New Hampshire, Paul Grant, along with Bob Lee. Thanks for joining us. Seeing bowling at its finest this week, the U.S. Invitational. The Clary shot here for Weber, off to the right. Al Johnson, one, three, and six, and then seven. Can he slide it over? Here goes the one, and it goes. No! Oh my goodness! That was 99% down, held up. Where's the train when you need it? Wow, what a sensational effort by Al Johnson. Denied the spare. And he settles for a 10. So 
for Mark Weber with a 90 after eight. And wait for the scoreboard update for the Hatchman. It's a 10 pin lead. It's 75 now after six for the combination of Chris Winniers and Al Johnson. 75 after six. Now we have Aaron Fontaine, Brian Purdy. Aaron Fontaine, red shirt for the Hatchman from North Brookfield, Massachusetts. On the left, Brian Purdy on the right from Buxton, Maine. Another one, seven, ten. Is that seven now? I think I lost count. I think it's seven now. Six or seven for the day. Tough one. Tough one box on that the first shot. To Aaron Fontaine, he comes back. It's seven more. That's not dead. It's still oh. falling. Took the wrong turn. Good, good comeback there for the spare. Didn't get it. Eight for Brian Purdy. He's at 71 after seven. 10 for Aaron Fontaine. He's at 70 after seven. That drops the lead down to eight now. Hatch him in on top. Both teams have one spare on the board among the other bowlers. Hatchman could really use the points. They only, only got two out of two and ten the first two matches combined. With the bowling ball mafia was ten and two. Aaron Fontaine for the spare bit here. Missed it. Punched out one. Party for a 10, gets one, gets an eight box. 79 after eight for Brian Purdy. And an eight for Aaron Fontaine. That gives him 78 after eight. Lead is still eight after the next bowler will. Okay. I'll bring it over for We have Doug Smith and Steve Walsh up here now. Both are working on Spears, Paul. Yep, Doug Smith from Augusta, Maine on the right. Steve Walsh of East Boston on the left in the red shirt. Oh, I'm sorry, that's it. I'm premature. The, the, the anchor bowlers are on Spears. These, guys, these gentlemen are both open. I apologize. Yep, that's okay, it happens. Walsh, who broke a pin earlier. It's hard to call a perfect broadcast. <laughs> I go back and watch the ones I've done. And I've never seen one. <laughs> Spare bid off to the right. Needs a big out here. Smith with a nine. Steve Walsh needs a big out here for a 10. Missed the head pin, gets seven. That's at 81 after seven. Steve Walsh with that seven is at 86 after seven. The lead is officially 10 at the moment. Ball ball, ball and ball mafia are up by 10. Nine drop there for Doug Smith. Steve Walsh with a manageable spare leave. He's got the sleeper in the back. The one, three, nine. For There's you. a spare for Doug Smith. I'll give 91 on the ball after eight. Steve hooks it left. Eighty-six after seven, and then a seven makes it eighty-three. A ninety-three. Ninety-three after eight for Steve Walsh. Correction, Doug Smith. Lead is 13 now. Well, I'm up by 13. Two points at stake here. And now I, I'm sorry I jumped the gun, but these are your bowlers who are both working on spares. Okay. Your anchor bowlers. Mark Carrier. On the right, on the left, Dave Chestakove. Dave Carrier from Newcastle, Maine. Dave Chestakove from Franklin, Massachusetts. Mark Carrier, the six on the spare field. That's called an eagle, huh? That's called the check mark. Check mark. And dominoes are falling. Eight 
on the stuff of Dave Chestico. Picks, picks up a couple on that. Make the match a little bit closer. Did he pick up the spare? No. Chestico for a spare. Can that wood help him? Hooks it right. Won't spin around though. Not the way he wanted to hit it. And the eight for Mark Carrier. A gain here for the Hatcherman. A nine for Dave Chestico. That's the first pin he's left on the deck. 115 for Mark Carrier after nine and a 91 for Dave Chestico. After seven, after seven, not nine. After Dave Chestico is on the right. After seven, yep. Dave, Dave has the 115. Yep, sorry. What was I saying about not a perfect broadcast? Let's get him off to the sides here. Dave Chestico for the Hatchetman. Off, both, both off the head pin. Good take with the spare, missed it. A little too full. Challenging shot here for Chester Cove. And the right to the guard though! Wow! Hit it perfectly! Last two fell. He's only missed. He's only been open twice. Wow. That's six What a marks. shot. That was a difficult shot for a spare for Dave Chestico. And that gives him a total of? 125. 125 and, 25 and a, a ball. ball for eight. Wow. And Mark Carrier after eight to one. So the score right now, 469 to 458, correct? To 459. That's a nine up there. It's a 10 pin lead for the Mafia. Oh, that was helpful. And hey, look at that, that's even more helpful. A strike. Back to Bob Lee for the call. Chris Merrill comes up huge. A lot of wood to help on that one for Dave. Both bowlers in the bonus. Merrill with two off of his strike. We're down to our last nine frames in the first string here. Okay, that's a two fill. And that's a, that's five on the first ball, a clipped eagle, a spread eagle. Ball is when you leave the three on the left yep. and the three on the right. So an e a single, e if we say an eagle leaves, we're talking about those three pins, whether, whether it's the uh, two, four, seven, or the, or the three, six, 10. We, if there's a sleeper in the back, either the nine pin or the 10 pin, we call that a talon, like the eagle's wing above a talon of, a, of an eagle. It's all a metaphor. Okay, that will be a seven. All right. A 107 for Rich Ramone, a 134 for Chris Merrill. And the lead is now up to 17. We'll fix that in our graphic. Paul, if you can do the call for the next bowler, and I, I'm going to fix the graphic down okay. below. All right. Still in the first string here. Up two in the match. The right side, we have Al Johnson. Left side is Mark, Reb Mark Weber. The Bowling Ball Mafia. Johnson's first shot off the head. Pitt gets eight, though. Spare lead for Al Johnson. On the head pin for Mark Weber. Gets two and two. A tough break. Paul Grant along with Bob Lee, live from Lita Lane's U.S. Invitational in National New Hampshire. And there's a spare for Al Johnson on 36. Uh, 
85 and a ball after nine. Weber looking for an out here. Gets eight. So at 98 after nine. Al Johnson on a fair. That's a 15 pin lead for the Bowling Ball Mafia, but Johnson's in the bonus here and takes three off of that. He'll just take three off. Didn't get the roll this time. 88 after nine. They came in the fourth box for Chris Winnius. Chance for a spare from Mark Weber. Can pull that wood over? Johnson goes black he's hole there. Big, he's got a big third ball coming. He needs these pins. Six on the left. One in the corner. Mark Weber. On the ball, Mafia. Can he pick it up? Oh, he got the right idea, but the back pin didn't fall. That's a good out. Nice out for Al Johnson with an eight. Ninety-six for the string for the combination bullets. Lead is thirteen. Nine for Mark Weber. One hundred seven for the string. Okay, third bowlers setting up for their final two boxes here in the first string. Bowling Ball Mafia with a 13-pin lead. Aaron Fontaine for the Hatchet Man on lane 36 will bowl next. Brian Purdy is next to him on lane 35. Oh dear, oh dear, that is a spread eagle and a talent. Purdy. He's got three of the back row. We're going to make changes. I will. Rich Lamone says there are going to be some changes in the lineup coming up for game two. Fontaine will be open. As is. Oh, Purdy uses the corner. I think that one skipped around. That bounced off the wall and the, and the curtain. I saw it earlier in the match also. That's a huge pickup, and the lead now is 16, plus a ball. We have wood in the, we have wood in the channels. We're going to have to get that fixed before we uh, start the 10th frame here, our third, third bowlers. Aaron Fontaine for the Hatchet Man on 36. You see his score in the third row. Brian Purdy hits the reset and get a little freeze there. Waiting for the pins. There it. And here's Fontaine. Oh! Guess it was a little full. Check mark on the right. One in the corner. He got it! He got it! Unbelievable! <laughs> and almost matched on the lamb to leave for Purdy, but he's open. Of course, Purdy. Amazing shot. Lead for the moment is 21, though, because Purdy was in the bonus. Fontaine, however, gets another rack here. This is a, his final ball in the first string. A little right. Gets a decent mix. And six more pins. Knock that, knocks that lead back to 15. Finished with a 101, right. Our, our fourth ballers, our fourth bowlers stepping in now. Doug Smith on the left with a 15 pin lead for the Bowling Ball Mafia. Bowling first on lane 36, Steve Walsh. 
He's 13 over, 93 through eight. Punches through. He's got a three and two left. Five remain on the left side for Smith. Nope. That's still, yeah, it's gone. Okay, both bowlers still looking at the head pin. Walsh also has two, he has the uh, three and nine back there. Another pin brings the lead to 20, 21. Up to the moment, it's 5.51 to 5.30. In the pocket. Drop seven. Ferris Spear opportunities now. Walsh in the corner with the triangle. He's Leaves that nine pin, and that, gonna, that brings the lead up. If he can get more than get a couple on his fill, it's a 21 pin lead to the moment, and that's going to make it really difficult, even with the spare for Dave Chesterkove. Okay, one on the fill, it leaves the door a little bit open. It's a 22 pin lead though. Doug Smith ends up with a 116. Dave Chesterkov, our leading bowler, I'm gonna try to match the 134 put up by uh, Chris Merrill for the bowling ball mafia. What a shot, oh no. He, he really was, he really is in uh, double strike territory though. He's trailing by 22 with two boxes to play. Nine nine goes in the fill, however. The four pin lead now. Well, we haven't we haven't seen uh, Carrier's ball yet. All right. Box to box, the lead is in the teens right now. No, no, that, that's gonna, I think that'll do it. Certainly if it, lead is back to 12 and that'll do it. Dave Chester Cove with a 144. One to play here, but the lead is 13 pins. I guess a double strike is in double strike territory. Red Eagle with a Talon for you, Paul. Uh, talon being the eight pin. The, and the two Eagles spread in front of you on either side. If it wasn't over before, it is now. Eight pins the difference and Chester Cove is open. 50 something not good enough either. Yep. What a what a game for Chesterco. Oh, right now, one ball left. Yep. He left two pins on the deck in that game. He had a pair of nines. That's it. Outstanding. 153. 153. Top bowler, but 
Outstanding strength. Yeah. Losing a top carry of 121. Going ball out. So the final score, we'll start the second string in just a moment with some minor changes here. It's going to be me. So, I've seen a lot of people. Mike Kane will be coming in. Rich Lamone making some switches. Sean Blaze is going to come in in the fourth slot. And Dave Chesterfield will continue to anchor. Dave Chesterfield. So Rich Lamone is going to lead off in game two. That's not a one. Just erase that one there. Bowling ball mafia moves to 12. 12 and 2. The Hatchet Man to 2 and 10. Hatchet Man uh, is, is named after uh, in honor of the uh, of, of, of Rich Lamone's brother-in-law. Who uh, was was killed in a car accident on Route 24 back in the 19 in the 1990s? He he was a famed basketball player. As the bowlers get started here in the first, Chris Merrill is open. Lamone has the what, what, what we've been calling the lemon drop in, in his honor when you hit the four or the six alone. But uh, I was saying, Rich, Rich's brother-in-law, uh, he was Dave Grace, uh, was, was killed in an accident on Route 24 by a driver who was unconscious. Oh my goodness! Spare a nine drop, a nine-pin spare. Coral Lamoni shows you how to make the lemon drop. And an early. One pin lead, we're just underway here in the second string. Merrill's off on the right. The fill is good for five. So 15 to nine. Oh, whoa, there you go. Four horses in the post for Merrill. He makes a spare in the second. Lamone looking at the one and the three, the seven, nine, ten. Three pieces of wood back there, though, and they all go down. What a shot. What a pair of spares for Rich Lamone. He's at 25 in a ball. Has a six-pin lead, just like that. First ball for Mark Weber. Off to the right, leaves three and two. Al Johnson gives us a spread eagle with a talon. Weber's open. I need charge. <laughs> this thing fell off. <laughs> All right, our screen is back. <laughs> Thanks to Chris. <laughs> All right, back to the bowling now. Johnson. How'd you get the score the first string? You get the score the first mm -hmm. Yep. It was 582 to 562. Weber will be open. And 
Johnson. That's Michael Caine up there. That's Michael Caine. I'm sorry. Michael Caine is in his substitute. <laughs> we missed the substitution there. From behind, I couldn't make out that that is Michael Caine. We just missed on the uh, two pinner. I've met Michael a few times. <laughs> he decides to just ne just touch, just just gently rub the uh, two pin going by. He leaves it standing for a nine. Michael Kane from Peabody, Massachusetts, goes to the Metro Bowl. Hey, Paul, I'm going to give this over to you and uh, work on some on some equipment for a minute. Okay. Second string of two. Live from uh, Lita Lane's National Hampshire, Paul Grant, along with Bob Lee. Great to have you with us. Third bowl is now Al Johnson against Matt Huff. Matt Huff is from Newport, Maine. Matt Huff, what's Matt Huff? Matt Huff new in this game. Filling in the string. Start to the 10 box. Al Johnson with a nine. Red Eagle. For Matt Huff. Here's Al Johnson left on the head pin. Strike pitch falls just a short, little bit short. That's the five pin. Piece of wood. Let's see what Matt can do with this uh, spread eagle. Knocks out the three on the right. For the spare, he gets it. Al Johnson picks it up. 19 in the ball after two. And Matt Hopp does what he's supposed to do with there a spread eagle, a 10 box. Pro 10. Very good judge. Only 20% of pros make a 10 after, make, after a spread eagle. Walking encyclopedia, Bob Lee. 20 after two for Matt Hopp. Fourth bowlers out of five. Have John Blaze on the left, Southbridge, Massachusetts. Doug Smith on the right. Doug Smith at a 116 in the first string. John Blaze from Southbridge, like I said, filling in the string. Doug Smith for a spare bit here. Missed it to the left, too bad. Blaze for a spare bit, he gets it, nails it. Hit it perfectly, two on the right, one on the left. Spare. First box, spare. John Blaze. Doug Smith. Up that 116 for a string. Good first ball, eight, I'll need some help to kick it over. John Blaze. Out to the left. Just celebrated his birthday. He had a 200 game this year. 15 after one. Dutch Smith's got a 10, sorry, 10 on the first box. Trying to kick it over for the spare. Oh sorry, 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 Bob, go ahead. No, no. How much can you say about getting a 200? He's one of the last, last to do it in the game. What's your high single, Bob? No, I don't want to talk about it. No, that's in the gut. That's a nine <laughs> for Doug Smith. Ten for John Blaze. Doug Smith, 19 after two. 
25 after two for John Blaze. Now anchors Mark Carrier for Bowling Ball Mafia. And for the Hatcherman, it's Dave Chesterfield. Mark Kane, a 121 in the first. Dave Chesterfield, a losing effort, a 153, and they lost by 20. Only left two pins standing that first thing. That was help. Both have good shots here. Chesterfield has a better shot, better chance. See if Carrick can slide this over. Oh, had the right idea. Didn't go. Chesterfield to keep up his magic. He's on. 153 for excuse me, 153 first string. Starts off string number two with a spare. Yes, yeah, score. Board. What's the score up there? Early going, 96 to 88. Oh, 1 5. Out. Lead for the hatchet, man. And the bonus. That. For a ball. love to see that 10 fall. For a ball like this, it's almost a spare leave, huh? If you consider a 1% shot a spare leave. <laughs> Well, he's bowling tonight, this afternoon. Mark Carrier's got a big mess over there. And only two fell on that one. I guess your 1% rule lives. Nice up by Mark we'll, Carrier. We'll see one this week, I bet. Made something out of nothing. No more than one. <laughs> Eight bucks. Ninety-six after the first two. Catch him in with a lead. They lost the first game by 20. They're only five in the match down right now. Bowling Ball Mafia has a uh, has only lost one game all day. This is their uh, this is their third match. They came in ten and two. Catch him in at two and ten. Would love to get put themselves back right. Chesterfield ended up with a 25 in those first two. Mark Carrier with an 18 after two. Now Rich Lamone and Chris Merrill up. That was, a, that was in the fill there for uh, Mer Merrill. Big nine drop makes it 28 after two. Rich Lamone on the right for a spare. Oh, oh no, almost pulled it off. And who needs the wood? Spare. Chris Merrill with a 134 first string. He's at 38 in the ball after three here. And a 10 for Rich Lamone. Rich at 39 after three. Hatchet man at the moment have a 10 pin lead, but uh, Merrill's in the bonus. Four horsemen right. Only four there. 42 after three for Chris Merrill. Lamont for the spare. Off to the left, missed everything. Both bowlers open in the fourth. Third match of the day today for these teams. Nine for nine for Rich, uh, nine for Rich Lamone. Forty-eight after four. Chris Merrill with the nine, he gets fifty-one. Fifty-one after four. So right now it's one thirty-four to one twenty-eight. Six-pin lead right now for the Hatcherman. Is Al Johnson now? Oh, he's up next, I'm sorry. Yeah. 
Mike Kane. Mike Kane from Peabody. Of course, it's Mark Weber on the left. For the spare. Oh, oh no. wow, I thought he had that. That's two where he's been robbed. Real close. And nine. 26 after three, and a nice 10 for Mark Weber, who had a 107 first three. He's at 30 after three here. Three tens to start the second and final string of this third match of the day. Wollen Ball Mafia won the first by 20 pins. Update. Hatch hatching up by 11 right now in this string. All right. And up to the moment, we have a five pin lead for the Hatchetmen here, about a third of the way through, and plus plus a, uh, a ball. Oh boy, Kane, Kane is just, He's missing. I He's think he touched it. I, I saw the five pin <laughs> move, and it didn't fall. No luck for him so far. Throwing a good ball, though. So five and a ball for the Hatchetmen. Weber looking at eight pins with his second ball. Wait for the ball to come back. Live from Needle Lanes, National New Hampshire, Paul Grant, along with Bob Lee, U.S. Invitational. Not called the Worlds this year with COVID, Canada could not make it, therefore it's the U.S. Invitational this year. The single matches yesterday, team matches start today. Wrap up on Saturday. Best bowls in the world bowling today. Minus Canada. Okay, now we're ready to start. Mark Weber on 35. Second shot. Skips it to the right. Wasn't a lob. Skip before the lob line. Five left up. Nine for Mike Kane. That's a common break so far, 35 after four. And Weber with a seven box only, 37 after four. So right now, 152 to 145 in favor of the Hatcherman. Seven pin lead in the strength, 13 down in the match. Hatcherman two and 10 so far today, coming into today's match. Bowling Ball Mafia 10 and two coming in. And Bowling Ball Mafia won the first string. Now oh, here's Al Johnson on the right, Matt Huff on the left. Another high-low jackpot shot. It's the seventh one of the day. Now Johnson hooks it. Got two out of that. Mark Huff misses. Now with a nine. Now with a nine. Thirty-four for Al Johnson. Twenty-nine. For Matt Huff through three. 167 to 154, 13 pin lead for the Hatchetman string. Lead is down to seven now for the match for Bolarama. I'm sorry, Bowling Ball Mafia. Bolarama's last match. Bowling Ball Mafia up by seven in the match. Down 13 in the string. All right, will Al Johnson sweep the wood on the left or will he go to the two on the right? They can go left, he does, and misses it totally. Always frustrating when that happens. You want to at least hit something, but missed it totally. Now it goes for the short two, 
and settles for nine blocks. 43 after four. Matt Huff with a nine. 38 after four. So it's 176 to 163 still. 13 pin lead for the Hatchet men. Fourth ball is coming up. Doug Smith, the ball, Bowling Ball Mafia. John Blaze for the Hatchet men. Hatchet men wearing the red shirts on the right side. Alley 36. John Blaze on the right from Southbridge, Massachusetts. Twenty-five, the first two boxes tonight. Doug Smith had a 116 in the first string. He had 19 after his first two. As John punches four. Oh, punch three for Doug Smith. Ugly leave. Right down the hole. Tough outs for both of them. John Blaze gets two, settles for eight. And a big comeback. Nine, could it be 10? He does, wow, what a shot for 10 bucks. Those never seem to go for spares. Doug Smith, big comeback in that one. He did a big out and got it. 33 for John Blaze. Doug Smith at 29 after three. Good opportunity for John Blaze. Head pin here. Not going to be easy for Doug Smith. He has the wood, so he can use that to manipulate the pin. And there's a spare for John Blaze. In the fourth box, 43 in the ball. He does get the spare with the wood. Nice shot by Doug Smith. He's up to 39 in the ball, up to four. It's an 11 pin lead right now for the Hatchet Men. Down nine in the match, up 11 in the string, through four. For the last two boxes for the first half, well, first four boxes for these two. Mark Carrier on the left for Bowling Ball Mafia. On the right for the Hatchet Men is Dave Chesterfield. Dave Chesterfield had a 25, spare five and a 10 in his first two. Come up for 153 first string. He's off to the uh, left there, gets five. Mark Carrier, good chance here for a spare, at least three. Get 18 for his first two. Let's see if Chester can pick it up. On the head pin, won't go. Good try. Mark Carrier for a spare bid. Missed it, just missed it by a couple of inches. Feel the breeze in that one. 710, that's no good. Eight bucks for Dave Chesterfield. 33 up to three. And nice 10 for Mark Carrier. Twenty-eight after three. Two hundred two to one ninety-three. Nine pin lead for the Hatcherman. Down eleven in the match, but up nine in the string. Chestikov trying to get the marks going again. On the head pin, triangle. Our carrier off to the left. Only got three there. Hatchman uses a spare to close the gap. Down 11 in the match right now. Missed it to the left. Carrier, nice hit in the head pin. Chesterkov. Get the 10, 43 up to four. A nice nine out of that for Mark Carrier. That puts him at 37 after four. So it's 212 to 202, a 10 pin lead for the Hatchetman. And they've got the deficit to 10 in the match. Thanks a lot. Here's Bob Lee once again. 
I think we have all our chargers back working. I think our, our system is, is ready to go. Of course, as the, as the bowlers switch side, we see Chris Merrill dropping six and facing the three and one, a side saddle triangle and the corner. Rich Ramon, it's gonna, it's gonna go! A late fall and strike. The two was the last to fall in that game. And Merrill is open. Now up to 11. Bonus ball coming for Rich Ramon. I was trying to tell the story earlier about his, his, his uh, brother-in-law, Dave Brace, who is known as the Hatchet Man. The team is named in, Dave, Dave's, in, his, in his honor. Um, it was his brother-in-law who passed, passed away in a car accident. Um, oh dear. And in the bonus, in the bonus, he gets two. But uh, they've been bowling um, one way or the other at the Worlds. A spare from Chris Merrill. He's going to have a chance to bite into that lead now. 70 plus a ball. Oh, what an out. What, what a, I mean, that's a spare shot, right? He's, he's still got it up. He's got his third ball coming up. Spread eagle in talent. Everything goes but the eight pin. And he leaves a nine. 76 in the ball for Rich Lamont, Chris Merrill. So at the moment, Lead. It's a one lead in the match. <laughs> yeah, it, it says 19. I don't think it's registered the 10 for Merrill, though. I, I'm going to have to check on that. But, uh, let's take the lead off the official scoreboard here. Mike Kane punches through on the left side for two. Tell us Mark, story. Mark story again. Yeah, yeah you know, it, it's just it, he, he was known as the hatchet man because he's a he was a he wasn't a great ball player is what Rich tells me for basketball, but he was best known for being almost impossible to play play against because his defense was so strong, and he 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 was known to uh, use his body and it, and his arms, and he called they called him the hatchet man. They're named in his honor, and they've been, they've been bowling in one way or another at the world since 2011. So that, that's 10 years, 10 years uh, minus the year for COVID. Still a pin in the channel on lane 36. Mark Weber, ready to bowl his first ball in the sixth. He grabs eight. Michael Kane. Off, off on the left side, he's 16 pin lead nominally. Weber's off to the right on his two pinner. Kane with a chance, what a shot! The one, one, and three, he hit the head pin, sent the, sent the one into the seven in the corner. His ball continued through and took out the triangle. What a spare on that. He finally gets a ball to their break. That's right, he's, he's, touched, he's touched pins for spares three times today. That time he took them all. He's got 55 in the ball to six. 56 after six for Mark Webb. The scoreboard says our lead is 20 now for the hatchet man. Is that even the match then? Three and nine, half Worcester for Matt Huff. He's one of the two bowlers along with his teammate. We'll be competing in the next money match. Money match three up at Extra Lanes. Each bowler puts up $500 and the house puts up $500 for $2,500. Winners take all. 
Alfie. There's another 17 test eight times today. And he's just these notches. He's done. The one seven ten. And that's no one's got so it far, yet. nobody's got it. Ten for uh, Alfie Johnson. Of course, Matt and Mark will be facing uh, the reigning champs, Brian Fuller Jr. and John Winchell. We're both also here on other teams. Now Johnson 55 after five. Here's Matt Huffman. Pick this up here. Played the wood. Got some ball action. Almost worked out for him. Big out. Big out for Alfie. Ball fell in alley 37. <laughs> See it coming up the lanes on the right. That's a 10 for Huff. And a great out. He was looking at eight pins. He knocked seven of them. I always put the ball in the hole myself almost every time. Good out for Al Johnson. Keeps the lead at 22. Now it's 62 up to six, 55 to pull out. Both teams with one with uh, a bonus ball coming up next and one among the uh, first three bowlers. Doug Smith on lane 36. Off to the right, he's got the four horses. John Blaze comes in late, raises the ball up high above his, above his right shoulder. And comes in with a little reverse action. He's got the two and one. Still there. Third balls now. Pair of eights. No blood. Lead is 23 pins. We'll put that up on the graphic. Realize the graphic is backwards. The hatchet man on your left. There's big 10. First ball from Blaze. John was telling me earlier today, uh, no such thing as a perfect ball in Candleton. He thinks there is one in Duckton. There is a perfect ball and a perfect gives you a perfect strike, but they've even done experiments with, with a, an iron byron machine that they brought out in the 80s, threw a hundred balls at the at, at, at the at the perfect at the perfect spot, and 60 of them went down for strikes, but 40 of them did not. <laughs> I'm looking for the data on that. I want to know how many splits there were. Here are our anchor bowlers now. Mark Carrier on lane 36. His first delivery off, a little thin on the head pin. He's got a five and one, five on the right with, with a sleeper in the back. Is that strike for Aaron at the end of the Is that strike? John that was John Blaze's strike, yes. Look at that, look at that. Everything but the corner goes. The carrier. Chester Cove staring. At the two pin, can't make it. He'll take eight in the fifth. That's a uh, 51 half for Chester Cove, 46 for Mark Carrier. First ball in the sixth. That's a diamond with a piece of wood where you want it. Great ball. Everything falling right for Chester Cove, literally in that case. 
the pins all fell to the right. It's a tough piece of wood there, though. Can you get yeah. around that is the question. The wood's pointed at the pin, though. Either way, everything but the everything but the eyeball, and I think this one can go. Here, call the right coach. And that was a ten for Carrier to bring you through the seventh and eighth strings. I'm going to pass it over to Paul Grant. All right, so the total right I'll now. Work on the graphics. Three twenty-two to two ninety-nine, is it? A 23 pin lead, but look at those fills coming up on the right. We have three, we, we had a spare, a strike, and another spare from uh, the hatchet, man. This is a bonus ball, however, for the bowling ball mafia. Seven in the fill for Chris Merrill. Okay, that brings up the 77 up to six. And the lead is 16 officially. For the, hatch, for the hatchet man. Try to sweep it, missed it to the right. Good take there, just a little bit off. Malone for a 10 box, in the gutter, seven. Nine for Chris Merrill. Chris Merrill, 134 on that first string. Rich Lamont with the 107. Chris Merrill is up to 86 now after seven. A seven, I believe, for Rich Ramon. Well, I believe that was a seven. They put down a ten. Came out of the gutter. They've not fixed that yet. Seven is in the eight. But <laughs> well, they came out of the gutter. He knocked three down. So yep. and Rich and Rich's ball. We're gonna yep. check on the scoring. There. Yep. We take the three off there. It's 316. Good take there, almost. Left one up there. Chris Merrill on the left. Rich Lamone on the right. And he gets a 10 box. So Rich, Rich Lamone's uh Seventh box was a seven, so take okay. three off the off the total there. All right, so he's at 96 right now on the screen, so it's really 93 then, right? You do the math. Yep, 93 for Rich Lamone. Chris Merrill with that 10 at 96 after eight. So it's a 14 pin lead for the Hatchman right now, but they've got a bunch of marks, a couple of marks coming up here. Three actually coming up. Kane with his first ball in the seventh. Just right of the head. He's got the horses. Just Weber. Just right. Six fill in that spare. 61 up to six. Mark Weber for a spare bid. Had the right idea, just missed it. Good effort. Kane for 10, gets a 9. 70 up to 7. Weber misses it. 8 box, 64 up to 7. So 16 pins, I, I, well, minus 3. 13 pin lead for the Hatchet Men in the string. They're down 7 in the total. They do, however, still have a bear and a strike coming up. A huge advantage for them. Mike Kane a little bit off to the right there. Mark Weber on the head pin gets two full also, he gets five. So Dave Chesterko calls this his favorite leave. He's being ironic, of course, the four and two. Four pins on the left, two on the right for Mike Kane. He's gonna face those with his third ball now. Try to. Chester Cove, right? Cove, right? Chester Field, right? Chester Cove, yes. Good try there by Mike Kane. 
Whoever it picks up, for 10 bucks. So Mark Kane, Mike Kane, with a 77 after eight, 74 after eight, for Mark Weber. Third bowl is coming up here in the second and final string of this match. Al Johnson on the right for the Hatchetman. Matt Huff on the left for bowling. Ball Mafia. On the head pin, he gets eight in the first ball. A chance for a spare if that wouldn't cooperate. Matt Huff off to the left. Momentum is on the Hatcherman side. They get a couple of marks coming up, a spare and a strike coming up to work on. He gets the spare, turn the wood around. Pick up the four and seven. Spare for Al Johnson for the Hatcherman. 72 in a ball after seven. Matt Huff, a difficult lead for a 10. Try to get two, he goes for the, oh, he gets the 10! Wow, he hit the five pin, and then went over and got the 10! Wow! All that for a 10, good shot, Matt Huff. 65 after seven. Johnson on a spare! He's the five, seven, 10. 79 after seven. See if Matt Huff can use a mark here. The bowling ball, Mafia. He's up four. Five, three, six, ten right, five in the back. See if Al Johnson can pull this. Houdini, Houdini act. For the spare. He gets it! Perfect shot from Matt Huff for bowling ball. Mafia, they needed that one. Nine for Al Johnson. 88 for Al Johnson. 24 pin lead, according to the scoreboard. 75 and a ball after it. Eight for Matt Huff. All right. All right, John Blaze working on a strike here in the sixth. Up against Doug Smith on the left. On the head pitch, strike! Oh, double! Double strike for John Blaze for the Hatcherman. And here's the strike on the other side for Doug Smith. Match game, PM. Wow. Two in a row for John Blaze. Doug Smith answers with one of his own. 4 10 to 3 73 currently. Hatcherman in control right now. Can he get a three? three? On the head pin, he gets seven of a perfect setup for a spare. 27 in that first strike box. 85 after six right now. 96 plus this ball. Doug Smith on a strike, he double it up. On the head pin! Six in the first ball. Looked good when he let go of it. John Blaze for a spare for a double strike. On the money! Strike, strike, spare! For John Blaze of Southbridge, Mass. Oh, can he steal it? Oh, almost stole it from the back. Doug Smith missed the object pin, almost pulled it off. And 10 blocks. He's of 91 after eight. And after a double strike and a spare, John Blaze is up to 115 in the ball after eight. And the Hatchman, 437 to 392, running away with it now in this string. But they lost by 20 in the first. Still plenty of time. Dave Chestakov, anchor for the Hatchman. On a spare. He gets nine. 70 up to six. Been hit from Mark Carrier on the left. 
some good wood there to help him with the spare. Chestico for the 10 pin for a spare. Got it. 80 in a ball after seven. For the spare, what a try. By Mark Carrier. Nine for Mark Carrier. 65 after seven. It's a 55 pin lead right now. Well, it's a 52 pin lead. Well, 52, I take three error. off the scoring error. 52 in the string, and that puts up 32 in the match. This does. Chestikov off the head pin, but gets the full horseman right. Six in the spare. 86 after seven. Triangle lead for Mark Carrier. For another spare, not quite. Mark needs a spare, just missed it. It's a tough shot to make sometimes. You have a percentage on those triangle shots there, Bob? 45. 45%. And a nine for Dave. Four pro with no wood. <laughs> and these guys are pros. 10 for Mark Carrier. So 95 after eight for Dave Chesterfield, Mark Carrier, 75 after eight. 60 now. Minus the three, minus the three. Make it 57, thank you. And 37 in the match for the Hatchman. And full control here with two boxes to go in the second and final string. Why you bring it home, Paul? Paul Grant with Bob Lee here, live from Lita Lanes in Nashville, New Hampshire, the U.S. Invitational. Day one of the team's match going all the way through Saturday, every day through Saturday. Yesterday with the singles all day. Chris Merrill, spare leave. Got that one, needed it. One oh six in the ball after nine for Chris Merrill for Bowling Ball Mafia. They won the first by 20, but the Hatchman have put it on here in the second. Lamon trying to make a spare that difficult shot. Gave it a ride, didn't quite go. And he settles for an eight. 104 after nine. He had a 107 in the first string. They should beat that. Chris Merrill on a spare. On the head pin, mixing around. Nine. 115 after nine. Golden chance here for another spread. They need it desperately. There's a nine drop and a wiggle. Chris gets the second spare in a row. Brings the lead down to 46. 125 and a ball for Chris Merrill in the 10th box. Rich Lamont needs the spare, missed it. Doesn't really, didn't really need it, but. They get 40, 45 right now, up to the minute. Each team has a bowler with a, with a fill. Gets a 10 box, so a 114 for Rich Lamone and a 107 in the first string. 221. Oh no. He cut just the, the quarter. three pin. Oh, the quarter. A one, a one-er. But still a great 126 string. For Chris Merrill, he had a 134 in the first and 126, 260 for the two strings for Chris Merrill. Nice bowling. 486 to 441, 45 pin lead in the string. 25 in the match for the Hatchetman. Second bowl is now Mike Kane for Mark Weber. Mike that came in the left. left for Mike. Mark Weber in the right. I think they hit three Ugly three shots for both of them. Mark needs a big out here. 
Nice out with a nine. Eighty-three after nine for Mark Weber. And a nine for Mike Kane. Eighty-six after nine. There's a lead down to forty-five, and it's twenty-five in the match, right? right? Still the same. Sorry. Missed the head pin. Keeps four. Missed the head pin also. Mike Kane, he's got four left. Weber needs this mark. Missed it. The string might be out of reach, but the total is still in play. Two points for a win, two points for a total, one for a tie. Punches out one in the middle, gets an eight box. Sells for a disappointing 91. And a 107 in the first string. 198 total for the two strings. Mike Kane, I think it's uh, 95. It's 504 to 458 in this string in favor of the Hatchetman. 46 pins, 26 in the match for the Hatchetman in the lead. After losing the first string by 20. Al Johnson against Matt Huff now. Good try there by Matt Huff, didn't go. Al Johnson going for a spare. Punch shot the head object in. And Matt gets the 10. The bowling ball mania. Puts him at 90 after nine. Al Johnson tells for an eight. Puts him at 95 after nine. Oh, good ball there by Matt. I thought he got an eight. It says seven on the scoreboard. Yeah, we're going to go with our, uh, with our Oh, here's a strike for Al Johnson. Good for him. Didn't go for Matt. He just spinned for 100. Missed it. 99 for the strength from Matt Huff. Now Johnson on a strike. Give me a double. Punch five, six. He's up to a 111 right now. Best he can do is 115. Takes his time. Delivers. Gets three. Almost four. Nine in the spare, Phil. 114 for Al Johnson for the Hatchetman. 48 pin lead with just two bowlers remaining, four boxes. 28 in the match. So a slim chance, getting slimmer and slimmer for the bowling ball mania, bowling ball mafia team. Did you say bowling ball media? I said mania at first. I corrected myself halfway. Bowling ball mafia. I can't read my own writing. Doug Smith now. Doug Smith. Oh. Flips an eagle. Lays is working on a spare. He's got three. He's got three in a row. Marks. Yeah, double strike and a spare. On the head pin, but pin that time gets four. 
Waste, the four, Phil. Waste throwing the ball might, might go anyway. Doesn't go for Doug Smith. Ten for Doug Smith. One on one after nine. John Blaze sells for eight. His mark streak is over. He's up to 127 after nine. 542 to 492. It's 50 pin lead. 30 of the match. For the hatchet. Frames the bowl. They need the points here. Two and ten coming in. And they get four here. Bowling ball mafia had. They came in ten and two. Ten and two coming in. Won the first string too. Stands as a correction in the standings. Ooh, missed it. Both missed the chance for the spare. Now you get it. It's always easy on the always easy on the third shot. Ducks put the 10, ends up with a 111 after a 116 first string. 227 total for the two for Doug Smith. 137. 10 box, 137 for John Blaze. Outstanding That's string. Our top bowler in the second string. Dave Chestercove, our top bowler in the first string now, sets up. At a 153. It's a 50 pin lead right now, still. 30 of the match. It's just about all done now. Yeah, um, they were in triple strike territory there. Yep. The Hatchman will rally for four points. Great, for, great to see Dave Chesterko, who's been, who's been injured, bowling yeah. so well. He, yeah. he, there's, there's no evidence that he, that he missed uh, six months with, uh, with an injury. And he gets the spare. <laughs> and sometimes you get really, the adrenaline flows in tournaments like this. You really get up to these matches, too. He just returned to play in the last, uh, in the last month. Mark Carey uh, with that 10 to 85 after nine. And shakes all around, it's, it's official now. So four points for the Hatchetman, two for Bowling Ball Mafia. I'll bring the six and 12 in the standings. It'll be 12 and six for Bowling Ball Mafia. Five more in the field for Chester. That brings him to 110 after nine. for Carrier, 95 for the total, 121 in the first string, and a 119 216 Dave total, 119 after a 153, 272 for the two strings for Dave Chestakov. And the final score of the second string, the Hatchetman, 576 to 522 for Bowling Ball Mafia, four points for the Hatchetman, two points for Bowling Ball Mafia. Hatchiman, Hatchiman now go to uh, six and 10, six and 12. Yep, and 12 and, and six. Bowling Ball Mafia goes to 12 and six. So thanks for listening, we'll be back again soon. Another match coming up. They don't seem to stop. <laughs> <laughs>